Welcome back to Pouring Through Life. So I bought my paint and realized it after I got home that I didn't get paint. I just got the untint, well, the light base. So um, it can't be used as a pouring medium because it has white in it. So if you mix that into your paints, it's gonna make every color pastel. Uh, so what I decided to do is I picked up another gallon of the color place white and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix one part of the actual correct paint to three parts of the tinted, untinted base, well, the white base. So I wanted to see the difference of what, what it would look like when it's dry. I put a little bit on the cardboard here and then I dried it with my heat gun. This is the light base from Color Place. This is the white semi-gloss. They're both semi-gloss. Uh, so this is the light base, the what you would use to tint it light colors, and this is their actual white pre-mixed paint. They're so close. I actually am surprised how opaque the base ended up being. So I think it'll work out fine. Um, I'm also going to show you what I add to my paints, which really does help the fluidity of them. Well, not really. It helps with the uh, quality of the paint. So less crazing, if, it, if you leave it a little too thick, that type of deal. Um, it also helps with how the paint settles or flattens out or levels. Um, it also helps with any sort of divots uh, scrapes, things like that. Uh, it helps level it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mix the two. I'm going to leave about, I would say about that much left in the container to add my add additives because I do it about 90% paint, 10% additives. That's the plan. So without further ado, I'm going to make a mess by adding the paint in. I'm going to have to pour low. See how I want to do this. Because I'm short. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to pour from down below. It's just easier. <laughs> so messy today for some reason. Everything I do has been messy today. All right. I don't need any more of this. I am going to clean out the little trough of the can because when you hammer the lid, I don't really enjoy having paint splatter all over me. Although you wouldn't know it by looking at my clothes because I think everything I own at this point in my life is covered in paint. All right, so let's put the lid back on. going to cover it just in case it does start splattering me. A little cute little hammer here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how much paint I put in this jug so you can see. And I think this uh, is almost, I think this is a gallon of paint if I recall. So that's how much actual mixed paint is going in here. Now this is the uh, light base semi-gloss. Oh, I'm so annoyed with myself that I grabbed the wrong can because Walmart doesn't let you return paint. That and I started thinking about it and talking to my inner paint goddess. And it's like, well, you know, I'll use it eventually. So let's just do it this way and then there won't be as much waste. Okay, so now, okay, I'm gonna fill it to about the top of the label here. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna do a little over 50 50. About there, should be good. Mm. 
Okay. All right. Clean this little trough out. And I've had this for like at least a month sitting around. It's taken me that long time, that long to get white paint from Walmart, the actual one I want. I, ultimately, I ended up having to have them mix it because they still hadn't got any in. That's possible, but I hope they don't decide not to carry it because I love it. It's my favorite paint by a mile for the pillow paint. It's such a beautiful white. It's like that happy medium between bright white and a creamy white. It's my by far my favorite paint. And I've used a lot of different paints throughout this process to try out. At least I didn't spill any paint on my floor. I managed to keep it on my little paper bag here. So that's awesome. Okay, so as you can see, we're at about 90% paint-ish. I'm going to get a little measuring cup. I keep those measured cups. Thank you. Just sit there. Um, sorry, I got interrupted and I lost my train of thought. So I, I always have those measured cups. I use it for resin a lot. Let me grab one of those. I'm gonna make sure it's clean because you don't want to add yucky stuff to your paint. I want to use to improve paint quality. I reorganized my space under my table because I just couldn't <laughs> keep everything in my area and it was making a huge mess and unfortunately in doing so I can't remember where I put anything. It's so annoying. Okay so we want the GAC. I guess some people say it's GAC. I just say GAC 800. And there's not very much left in here. Oh! Okay. It's going to be all of what's in here for sure. I usually mix, let me see, my other bottle. This was a half gallon, I think. And I mixed, uh, three ounces of GAC 800 in a half gallon. This is almost twice, we're really close to twice the, that, I think. So, I'm gonna just, yeah, it's the rest of it. So there's four ounces in here. I'm gonna let that sit while I get the other products out. Uh, my next item is Oatrol and XIM Latex Extender. I don't need very much of the XIM because it is the consistency of water and I don't want to over thin it. I am going to use this because I'm going to mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of XIM into this JAC 800 container. I'm going to give it a shake because I want the leftover little bits that are in there. Come on. Does it waste not want not? Is that the saying? Okay. Just give it a little shake. Shake, 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 shake. So I get I put almost five ounces of GAC for this bottle. And then I'm gonna just pour the Ovatrol in here. Let that finish up. 
And then I'm gonna rinse this out and recycle it. I might, maybe I'll use it for paint. I don't know. Problem is I'll forget what's in it. Okay, so I'm gonna dump that. Maybe I'll mix. Yeah, let's go ahead and put that in here. I don't want to over thin it so oh but once I put the oatrol this stuff is thick like kind of like the pouring medium we use for the bloom it's really thick like pudding thick or glue wall it's probably about the consistency of glue wall and I, I'd like eight ounces for this much paint but yeah it's like a mound on a mound on a mound really super thick so there we go I'm gonna clean this out. I'm gonna put a little stick. And go like that. And I wanna put the lid back on this. And put the XIM back. Oops, let's see if I can remember where I put everything come the next time. That's done, that's done. And now I'm going to mix it. And it's perfectly where I want it to be in this container as far as height, because I like to give it a mix before I pour it out. Um, make sure nothing's separated between the paints, like the tints and whatnot. be interesting to see if I can tell the difference between this mixture and my normal white. It feels the same consistency wise. My husband says I should pick up a paint mixer and I have one that came with an order once and it I've never used it. It's just sitting in a box someplace under my table. I don't usually whip my paint, but because I am mixing that base into paint, I want to make sure it's incorporated really well so I don't have streaks of different tones of paint in the container. This little jug I'm using is from a Christmas uh, gift from Dr. Teal's. It had like soap and a scrubby and Epsom salt. But I was like, hey, that's perfect for pouring paint in. That's about the exact size I like. Because I go through a lot of paint. I mean, I pour several times a day. And just to get all my commissions done, in a timely fashion. I mean, I'm gonna have to take a little break and get some resin work done today. But yeah, I pour every single day. It's my sanity. This has gotten me through quarantine. It has kept my family afloat during quarantine. And yeah, it's really helpful. Okay, so let's see how it works. Let's get a little tile and we'll pour on it. I always have tiles that I can pour on. So let me get my spinner. And let's just check it out. Cleaning off the tile. Use a little bit of alcohol. Boop, boop, boop. 
like that. The baby wipe, wipe it off. Good and clean. Just don't use cheap wipes because these cheap wipes, it leaves little hairs, or little fibers from the wipes. I have. Uh, get asked a lot, how do you keep your tile from falling off, blah, blah, blah. What I do is I loop a piece of tape. Okay, sorry about that. I just had to put that cup away. I don't like to waste those measured cups. They are expensive, and I use them in everyday world. So, oh, okay. So, people ask me, how do you keep your tiles on your spinner? This is exterior painter's tape. I guess it's waterproof. Um, just put it down. Keeps it from falling off. And that's that. Okay, what colors should we do? I have what I mixed up earlier already mixed. So I think I'll just go that route. Uh, so that I don't have to waste time by mixing together some paints. Plus, it's my current favorite of the week. Just grab a couple little sticks here. I use these reusable sticks. They're honestly amazing. I'm going to check and make sure you're still in screen for a pour. All right. Perfecto. Una perfecto. Just a tad here. I got my, oh, I got to plug in my blow dryer. Let's move the heat gun to its happy little home. Plug in my, the cutest little blow dryer in the world. It's my fave. Is working. We got five. I need six. I have my coffee cup that I use to hold my sticks in it. It's Baby Yoda. It got broken. I dropped it and broke it, so now it's my paint stick holder. I was so sad. It was one of my Christmas gifts from my husband, and I cannot believe it died. Sparkle. I might change up the layer, the order in which I did it though, because I did a coaster set and this 18 inch round sitting off the side here in these same colors. Maybe I'll adjust which order I put them in. Not the first two because they're the darker colors and I like the contrast of each other. But maybe I'll put a little gold sparkle under them so when it blows out and it bounces into the pillow paint, it pulls out some of that sparkle. And then maybe I'll do hydrangea also under. Or pixie dust. I don't know. I like them all. That's the problem. That's why I keep buying more and more of them. Because I love them all. I will say though the dragon wings, dragonfly wings set is a little bit more complicated as far as mixing. I, I feel like I'm having to use twice as much of the powder so that I can really see the vibrancy of the color and it might be me, but the jars didn't look mixed. Like the pigments are in the jar, but they weren't mixed together. However they create their pigments, I don't know. It just isn't, it's not like it normally is. It's weird. So I'm gonna have to, I emailed them to find out what to do because it's weird. Um, I'm gonna try shaking the jars and see if that mixes them together. Sorry. I've given up that I'm ever gonna have clean hands since I paint. Just isn't possible. Okay, so wipe that off. And I need a little bit more paint than that. So I'm gonna use my spoon. I keep a spoon right here. So 
so I can, when I got a full jug like this, then I can just boop, add some paint. And once it gets a little lower, I'll be able to mix it better. I still feel like it needs to mix, actually. So hold that thought. I'm going to put this on it. And I also still got to write down what I put in here, because if I don't, I won't remember. So that way this, whatever's on the bottom, goes all the way to the top. That feels really, that feels like, oh, a draw. It doesn't feel like paint. That's done. All right. Yeah, I can even see the color difference. Together a little bit. Sometimes you have to do this just to make sure they're. Yeah, I can see the difference in the colors looking at it. Crazy. Okay, so after I'm done, I'm going to write on the outside of the bottle exactly what I put in it so I remember what I put in it. So the five ounces, the two ounces, and the eight ounces, along with the two different paints that I mixed together. I might add a little bit more of the white into this once I get a little bit out, because I, it's not thick and as thick as I would like it to be. It disappears right in when I add, and I should see, yeah, it's too thin. I will need to play with this a little bit. It's not exactly where I need it to be. It disappears instantly and I don't like that. Okay, so, just gonna wipe off what's on here. Okay, close this lid. Hold that thought. Just gonna wipe the outside of it off. So it doesn't super glue the lid closed. Started doing that most recently because I can't get them open if, if I don't. Okay. And then there's my dump problem, of course. Set this off to the side here because I still got a write on it. And let's put some paint on this tile and see what we get. Okay, so first colors first. I'm gonna start with Gold Sparkle. Oops, threw that on the ground. Jesus. So this is Pixie Dust. Ranger. So I'm doing the reverse of the big painting right now. And I'm going to put Shy Rose. Blissful Bordeaux and Liquitex Deep Violet. Okay, a little bit of hydrangea. Shy Rose. A little bit of 
Galaxy Dust. And a little bit of Gold Sparkle. And with Gold Sparkle, a little bit goes a hell of a long ways. So I'm going to move these paints to the side so I don't knock them over. I'm going to do Bubble Patrol. Pop some bubbles. Uh, all right, let's get the cell activator ready. And my cell activator is Lamp black by Amsterdam mixed three parts uh, Aussie flow trial to one part paint I do it three to one on all of them that I use as cell activators scoop off this spillage and put a little bit on the edges what has the pigment in it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape all this excess paint off so that when I spin it, it doesn't go flying all over my house. This will keep me from having to drag you over to my little doggy pool in my kitchen. I need a new little stocking cap, or a new shower cap for my <laughs> spinner. It's getting worn out. It's really pretty. Really lovely. It's amazing how just the difference in uh, layering does, even though it's the same exact color. But I also got some cool effects where the way I blew actually made a little bit shapes of petals in here. Guys, let me move this cutie out of the way. Just waiting for the last little bit of the center to pull itself back in and then we'll be ready to spin this buddy out. Really love these colors, gorgeous. I never really used to love purples and pinks all that much. I mean, I, I appreciate them, I think they're pretty, but I don't love the pastel or light colors. I kind of like reds and blues, dark colors. But this is so pretty, I can't even stand it, it's so pretty. And the lacing, the way I blew, I got some cool little like veiny things. Kind of looks like veins. I don't know if you really look at a flower, you can see the, I don't know if they're veins or what they're called exactly. And it's really neat to see that when I'm, ah, hello paint. Well, yeah. <sighs> Apparently I went a little fast. It's all over me. It's okay, I'm wearing my paint clothes. But this is why I don't have any clothes that don't have paint on them. And that's also why I know that that paint is too thin. Because if it was not so thin, it would not have went cuckoo cuckoo and sprayed the way that it did. Turn that over a little bit. Slow it down, Shannon. Slow it down. Stupid. So 
really silly human. Cleaned off my table just to get it all messy again. Okay. Well, these pants are toast. Oh, they're gonna, I'm gonna keep them. I'm gonna make them into the coolest splatter pattern paint pants ever seen. I just don't wanna step in it and track it everywhere. So bear with me here, folks. I mean, it, I got some seriously good spray. It went all the way over <laughs> here. Whoopsie. Okay, so which way did I just go? I'm gonna go this way. Some at me. It's another question I get asked a lot. How do you know you've spun off enough paint? Well, the painting will tell you, but if you lift it up and you tilt it and the paint moves incredibly fast, you have too much paint on it. I like it. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, so let me just scrape a little bit more off so it doesn't continue to spray all over my house. No, my paint is too thin. Okay. So I do my color tests, tests like this on tiles that I buy at the Habitat store because it's a heck of a lot cheaper. I get them for depending on which size 10 to 25 cents per tile and it just yeah it makes a big difference trying out a technique a new technique or trying out new products things like that it's good to use something that's not gonna bankrupt you I think it's done though I usually tape off the back too, because I will resin this, it's beautiful. It'll make a beautiful heat resistant trivet when I put heat resistant resin on it. All right, let me just get a cup to let this cutie dry on. I have a stack of cups that I usually would use for flip cup pours. Right now, they've been used to dry resin and whatever else I'm working on. Okay, let me wipe my hands off really quick and I'll take you in for a close-up. Give me a second, okay? Oh. It's recording, I'll be done in a second. Okay? Okay. 
hold on. I just gotta do a close up on my picture and I'll be done, okay? I didn't know you were Okay, so that's the one from earlier. And that's the reverse colors of this. So I really like this. It actually lightened it up quite a bit doing it reversed. I love that section with all the multicolored cells. Oh, so pretty. All right, you guys, if you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button, like, and comment. And if you want to be notified of future videos, don't forget to hit that notification bell. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it helps you. Bye for now. See you on the next pour.